Hello everyone, this is Rishav and you are watching Company360.in. Today we will be talking about IPR news of July 2021. This video summarizes the latest news and provides a quick overview of the judgments and legal developments in the field of intellectual property law. IPR Awareness Initiatives Singhania Partners LLP and CII TNTDPC organized patent training program 19 July 2021 to 23 July 2021. Bhavna Sharma, Head Patent Designs, addressed the students and faculty members in the live 5 day certificate course on patent laws jointly organized by Singhania and Partners LLP, Confederation of Indian Industry, CII. Tamil Nadu Technology Development and Promotion Center TNT DPC and ISERD Indian Analytics in collaboration with Central Law College Salem Tamil Nadu from 19 July 2021 to 23 July 2021 The course focused on the principles underlying patent law in India including patentability searches and technical drafting to patent enforcement and protection and the related laws Patents the court upheld interim injunction against the defendants from using patented agrochemical ingredients. The High Court of Delhi court passed a landmark judgment and injuncted Best Corp Science LLP and Natco Pharma Limited defendant from infringing the granted patents of FMC Corporation Plaintiff. The plaintiff owned the patent 201307 IN307 for method of preparation and the actual precise molecular structure and formula of CTPR. CTPR is one of the 148 specifically exemplified in the patent IN307 which was granted as no pre-grant or post-grant opposition was filed by anyone, including the defendant. Also, the counterparts of the suit patent have been granted in more than 40 countries. Further, the patent 213332 IN332 is the process patent. Moreover, the counterparts of IN332 had been granted patents in over 40 countries, where they have been neither revoked nor invalidated. Further, the patent 204978 IN978 contains a Marcus formula, from which the compounds in patent IN307 were asserted to be novel and inventive. The plaintiff acknowledged that CTPR falls within the scope of the numerous compounds and falls a part of the class of anthranilamides included in the Marcus formula, disclosed and claimed in the patent IN978 but asserted with equal emphasis that CTPR is not specifically disclosed in IN978 and that a person skilled in the art would not be able to synthesize CTPR based on the claim and disclosure in IN978. The defendant mainly defended their impugned actions based on the invalidity of the patents of the plaintiff. The defendant further raised contentions to support the submission that CTPR was disclosed by the genus part that is claim 22 in IN978 and stated that section 112B of the Patents Act 1970 creates a presumption of the existence of a disclosure in a patent to which the priority date has been assigned. The court did not agree with the same and held that once the defendant accepts that Marcus claims are patentable, it no longer remains to the defendant to rely on Section 112B of the Patents Act 1970 to advance an argument that as Claim 22 in IN 978 was patented, there must be a presumption of disclosure of CTPR therein. The defendant further asserted vulnerability of IN307 as having been anticipated by prior claiming in claim 22 of IN978. In this regard, the court held that the section 641A of the Patents Act 1970 can be invoked as a ground for revoking a patent. The relevant states as under. 64. Revocation of Patents 1. Subject to the provisions contained in this Act, a patent, whether granted before or after the commencement of this Act, may 149 be revoked on a petition of any person interested of the central government by the appellate board or on a counterclaim in a suit for infringement of the patent by the High Court on any of the following grounds, that is to say, a. That the invention so far as claimed in any claim of the complete specification was claimed in a valid claim of earlier priority date contained in the complete specification of another patent granted in India. The court, while invalidating the defendant's claim, stated 
that there is an obvious etymological difference between a guarantee of validity and a presumption of validity. Grant of patent cannot obviously guarantee its validity, else a granted patent would become immune from challenge. Thus, the challenge posed by the defendant to the validity of plaintiff's patent need not be such to demonstrate conclusively the invalidity thereof. That at the interim stage, it is sufficient if the defendant can make out a case of the patent in question is vulnerable to revocation under the Patents Act 1970. In view of these findings, the court restrained the defendant from manufacturing, using, selling, distributing, advertising, exploiting, offering for sale or any other manner, directly or indirectly, dealing in any product which infringes the subject matter of IN 307, including the product CTPR claimed therein or using directly or indirectly any process as claimed in IN 332 for the manufacture of CTPR or the claimed subject matter of IN 307 till the disposal of the present suit. While granting an injunction, the court held that the defendants failed to establish prima facie invalidity of the granted claims, which was the main defense of the defendants. SMS Pharmaceuticals allowed to export Merck, Sharp and Dome Corporation's patented drug Cetagliftin. The High Court of Delhi on 20th July 2021 ruled in favour of SMS Pharmaceuticals defendant as it vacated the ex parte and ad interim order passed by the court on 21st October 2020. This order was passed in favour of Merck Sharp and Dome Corp plaintiff as a temporary injunction was imposed on the defendant from infringing plaintiff's patent of Cetagliptin, an anti-diabetic drug. In the present matter, the plaintiff sought injunction against infringement by the defendant of the plaintiff's patent, Cetagliptin, an anti-diabetic drug, Indian patent number 209816. The plaintiff contended that the defendant infringed the plaintiff's patent by advertising for sale Cetagliptin hydrochloride in its active pharmaceutical ingredients API and analytical standards. The court has observed that the defendant advertised the sale of drug Cetagliptin and affirmed the availability of Cetagliptin phosphate for a sum of Rs 1 lakh for 1 kg to the investigator during an inquiry. Further, the court opined that the plaintiff has a valid and subsisting patent for which a certificate of validity has already been submitted. The court also granted an ex parte ad interim injunction in favour of the plaintiff against the defendant. The defendant then filed an application under Order XXXIX Rule 4 of the Code of Civil Procedure 1908 and sought vacation or modification of the ex parte ad interim order passed by the court earlier in the present proceedings. The defendant responded to the contentions by the plaintiff through a written statement mentioning the fact that the defendant is a 30-year-old research and development-based API manufacturing group that has a client base in over 70 countries. To this, the plaintiff submitted that once the drug is permitted to be exported, it would be impossible for the plaintiff to verify or investigate whether it is ultimately being used for the R&D purposes or is it being exploited. The plaintiff also contended that the export of Cetagliptin by the defendant has been continuing since 2016 and almost 800 kg have been exported till date. Therefore, such a transaction cannot be treated as being aimed at R&D. The defendant contended that the dealing of the defendant was the result of a joint venture between defendant and MS Chemo AG Lugano Chemo for development and manufacturing of certain products, so that the products could be launched in the market after expiry of the patent. It was further claimed that the defendant had already obtained the due permission from the government and drug control authorities and all the dealings of the defendant were within the scope of the patent laws. Further, the defendant claimed that no manufacturer or production of these drugs was for commercial purposes. The sole intent of the defendant was to launch the drugs in a generic form to an affordable price after the suit patent will expire. The defendant also contended that they have never sold cetagliptin hydrochloride in commercial quantities or to any clients who are using it for commercial purposes and the activities of the defendant were permissible, as the defendant was only engaged in sale and export of the cetagliptin hydrochloride for the purposes of R&D. Further, the court opined that the defendant's prayer for being extended the benefit of Section 107A of the Patents Act 1970 deserves to be allowed.
the court allowed the defendant to export the API citagliptin to Kemo and Verbin as preyed. AstraZeneca denied interim injunction against Indian pharmaceutical companies. The High Court of Delhi in a decision has disavowed the plea of AstraZeneca AB and AstraZeneca Pharma India Limited plaintiffs for permanent injunction to produce tepagliflozin DAPA against incest pharmaceuticals. Alchem Laboratories, MSN Laboratories, USB Private Limited, Zydus Healthcare Limited, Zydus Medica and Eris Life Science defendants. The plaintiffs claimed that the defendants' products infringed their patents 205147 IN147 and 235625 IN625. Both the patents were granted to Bristol Myers Squibb, which were then assigned to the AstraZeneca AB in 2014. and the validity of the said patents was till october 4 2020 for the patent IN147 and is till 15th may 2023 for the patent IN625 before the expiry of the 20 years term of IN147 suits for infringement in relation to both patents were filed against micro labs limited ajanta pharma limited intas pharmaceuticals limited torrent pharmaceuticals limited and alchem laboratories limited further after expiry of the IN147 a suit for infringement of the IN625 was filed against the defendants The plaintiffs had argued that DAPA was disclosed in the IN147 but it is claimed only in the IN625. Additionally, the plaintiff claimed that in IN147 was the genus patent which only covers the core structure claims whereas the IN625 was the species patent specifically claiming DAPA which was invented only in the year 2001. and was separately protected as an invention under IN625 distinct from the genus invention the defendants challenged the infringement claim on several grounds including the ground that IN625 itself was invalid the defendants argued that since DAP was covered under the IN147 as per the plaintiff's admission the IN625 could not have been granted for the same invention therefore the IN625 was not invalid and hence no injunction could be granted related to the IN625 The defendants also argued that since IN147 had expired there could be no injunction related to the said patent. The court noted that the plaintiffs themselves have pleaded that manufacture of DAPA by the defendants amounts to infringement of the IN147 and IN625. If DAPA was not disclosed and or known at the time of seeking in the IN147 and was only invented subsequently and patented IN625 There could be no infringement of the IN147 by manufacturing and or selling DAPA by the defendants. Therefore it could be followed that DAPA was a subject matter of the IN147. The court noted that with respect to one invention there can only be one patent. The court also noted that for the IN625 to be with respect to a new product involving an inventive step over IN147 The description of the IN625 should have described the technical advancement over and or the difference in efficiency from what was disclosed in the IN147. However, the court noted that the complete specification of the IN625 does not disclose any technical advancement or difference in the efficacy over the invention in IN147. In addition to the above the court also noted that the tests of obvious to a person skilled in the art anticipation by publication and use before the date of filing of patent application with complete specification in the context of an earlier patent and its specification must be different when the inventor of both is the same
trademarks. The High Court of Delhi grants an interim injunction projecting the mark CrossFit. The High Court of Delhi court granted an interim injunction in favor of CrossFit LLC plaintiff protecting the trademark the domain name CrossFit trademark against infringing use by Mr Ranjit Kunnamal defendant. The plaintiff has been using the trademark CrossFit since 1999 and has various registered domain names with the said trademark. As a result of prior adoption and long, continuous and extensive use, the plaintiff's trademark CrossFit has acquired invaluable goodwill and has become indelibly associated with the fitness or training services provided by the plaintiff. In 2013, a uniform domain name resolution policy UNDRP complaint was also filed by the plaintiff CrossFit Incorporated versus Results Plus Personal Training Incorporated, in which the UNDRP wide decision dated 28th June 2013 passed orders for the transfer of 113 domain names which included the use of the word CrossFit in favor of the plaintiff, hence substantiating that the trademark CrossFit was identified with the plaintiff solely. The trademark was given reputation of a well-known trademark within the meaning of section 21ZG of the Trademarks Act 1999 by the court in its order dated 30th October 2015 in CSOS 2114/2014 CrossFit Incorporated versus Gurpreet Singh for fitness or training services. In 2018 the plaintiff came across the mark SFC CrossFit being used by the defendant on various social media platforms such as Facebook Twitter under the same name for providing similar identical gym and fitness services the plaintiff had sent a cease and desist notice via email to the defendant and had called upon the defendant to stop using the trademark for any commercial or personal use the defendant had alleged that the mark was a generic term and did not have any significance in this field whatsoever and continued to use the trademark on the social media handles and website domain names the claims made by the plaintiff remained uncontested as the defendant neither appeared nor filed any written statement the court held that the plaintiff made out a clear case of infringement of the trademark crossfit by the defendant and that the trademark crossfit is not a generic term the court stated that the trademark crossfit has no known etymological significance and hence is an ex facie and artificial and coined word which is entitled to an enhanced degree of protection under the trademarks act 1999 The court granted an ex parte interim injunction in favor of the plaintiff and restrained the defendant from using the trademark online and offline. The High Court of Bombay provides protection against the infringement of the mark Divert. The High Court of Bombay court granted an injunction against Kiama Life Sciences defendant from using any mark similar to the mark of Franco India Pharmaceuticals Private Limited plaintiff. The court passed this order after analyzing the matter as a prima facie case against the defendant and stated that any infringing use by the defendant would cause irreparable damage to the plaintiff. The plaintiff is a prominent manufacturer of medicines and health related products in Asia and Africa. The plaintiff have been retailing the products under the trademark Divert for 2 decades. The plaintiff also adopted an extended range of products such as Divert Plus and has obtained various trademark registrations of variants of their brand. The product range under the trademark Divert and smaller marks include multivitamins and multiminerals which are essentially prescribed as supportive allopathic therapy for diabetes. The plaintiff discovered that the defendant has been using the mark Kyvit and various related marks like Kyvit Plus, Kyvit M and Kyvit C for allopathic tablets and syrups on websites www.kymalife.com. The said infringing products were not available in the market for sale. The plaintiff alleged that the trademark Kyvit when compared with the defendant's marks were structurally and visually similar and that the two marks were indistinguishable. as the minute change of the letter d to k creates ambiguity leading to deception and confusion in the minds of consumers the court emphasized on the fact that the matter required an immediate action as the products in question were pharmaceutical products and any confusion in the minds of the consumers can cause irreparable damage to a consumer's health since the plaintiff sold medicine specifically for their diabetic patients keeping in mind the security of public and the interest of the consumers an injunction was granted by the court against the defendant and the defendant was restrained from using the mark kyvit and various related marks like kyvit plus kyvit m and kyvit c or any mark like that of the plaintiff's trademark divert the high court of delhi grants ex parte interim injunction of protection of the mark mangala the high court of delhi court granted an ex parte injunction in favor of mahabir prashad mangala and a and r plaintiff who filed a suit for permanent injunction against hari krishan gupta defendant claiming trademark infringement over the use of the trademarks mangala and jk mangala 
the plaintiff instituted the suit to restrain the defendant from infringement, passing off and for damages under Section 27 and 29 of the Trademarks Act 1999. The plaintiffs are registered proprietors of trademarks Mangla and JK Mangla in Class 29 since the year 2007. The defendant had applied for registration of the trademark Mangla in 2008, which was opposed by the plaintiff in 2010. And during the pendency of registration, the plaintiff got the defendant to formally assign the said mark Mangla in favor of the plaintiffs. The registrar for trademarks disposed of the opposition proceedings in 2012 and allowed the assignment request in favor of the plaintiff. After completion of all the formalities and trademark Mangla was registered under Class 28 in favor of the plaintiff. Presently, the plaintiff contends that the defendant again, with a dishonest intention, sought to register the mark Mangalam. He further contended that the adoption of the mark Mangalam is malefied and dishonest, as the defendant is aware of the rights of the plaintiff in the trademarks Mangala and JK Mangala. The court observed that the plaintiff established a prima facie case in their favor, and the balance of convenience was in favor of the plaintiff. After observing the merits or demerits of the submission that had been made on behalf of either side, the court held that till the next date of hearing, the defendant or any other person acting on its behalf was restrained from manufacturing, marketing, selling, offering for sale, advertising, or displaying directly or indirectly, dealing directly or indirectly in edible oils and other allied cognate goods under the mark Mangalam, which was identical, deceptively similar to the plaintiff's trademark Mangala and JK Mangala. Sony Corporation fails to get an injunction against travel service company in Bangalore. The District Court of Bangalore Court rejected a plea by Sony Corporation plaintiff for grant of injunction against Sony Tours and Travels defendant filed for infringement of the plaintiff's trademark. The plaintiff is a reputed company having business in over 193 jurisdictions. The trademark Sony used by plaintiff is their universal trademark and has been used as a trademark, trade name, domain name or a part of their trade name since the 1950s. The plaintiff has stores under the trademark Sony Center which are brand identity in India. Also, the plaintiff is the proprietor of television channels under the mark Sony Pictures Networks India. In 2002, the plaintiff came across the defendant's business name Sony Tours and Travels in relation to business of transport services and car rental services. The plaintiff issued a cease and desist notice against the defendant thereafter, but there was no response by the defendant neither did they stop using the mark Sony for their businesses. The plaintiff approached the court in 2018 and the court granted an ad interim injunction against the defendant until they appeared before the court. The case was transferred to the commercial court in 2021 and after calling upon the defendant the defendant submitted the written statement claiming that the defendant was a small business owner engaged in the business of transport services and car rental services under the name and style of Sony Tours and Travels at Ulsur Bangalore The defendant claimed to be involved in the said business in the same area for the past 27 years with restricted operations at Ulsur with limited clients the defendant further claimed that its business is not likely to cause any confusion on the part of the plaintiff's customers or clients as his business was entirely different from that of the plaintiff The court held that as per the trademark registrations the plaintiff is not involved in tours and travel businesses and admittedly is only involved in manufacture of electronics goods with a business in print and media having various TV channels in the name Sony. The court emphasized that the plaintiff's trademark is used for different goods when compared with the defendant's as the nature of the business of defendant is entirely different from that of the goods manufactured by the plaintiff. The court relied upon the Supreme Court judgment Nandini Deluxe versus Karnataka Cooperative Milk Producers Federation Limited reported in 2018 9 SCC 183 and reiterated that the proprietor of a trademark could not enjoy monopoly over the entire clause of goods and particularly when he was not using the said trademark in respect of certain goods falling on the same clause An injunction for infringement of trademarks can be granted only if the plaintiff establishes that an average person of ordinary intelligence would be deceived or confused on usage of the similar name by the defendant. The court stated that in the present case marks of the plaintiff and the defendant are altogether different and are used for different goods. The court also highlighted that the plaintiff admittedly filed this suit after lapse of 16 years from the date of issuance of the notice in the year 2002 without explaining the said delay and the court held that the prayer sought by the plaintiff is vague and baseless 
and stated that no average man of ordinary prudence is likely to connect the defendant's mark with the plaintiff's manufacturing business. Rights in trademark once relinquished cannot be claimed unless the relinquishment term is revoked. High Court of Delhi Ampa Cycles Private Limited defendant appellant moved the High Court of Delhi court with an appeal impugning the order dated 17th March 2021 of the learned single judge of this court confirming the interim injunction granted in favor of Jagmohan Ratra plaintiff respondent who had filed a suit against the defendant appellant company for permanent injunction to restrain passing off of the trademark and for ancillary reliefs In 1983 the plaintiff along with Hari Dutt Sharma established a partnership firm MS4 Diamonds engaged in manufacturing and selling of bicycles tricycles prams baby rider bicycles and related products the trademark Ampa and logo were coined which was later on adopted by MS4 Diamonds in 1991 in respect of bicycles and tricycles further in 1992 the plaintiff and MS4 Diamonds established MS Ampa Bikes Private Limited ABPL as shareholders however in 2003 MS4 Diamonds was dissolved with Hari Dutt Sharma exiting retiring from the partnership and the plaintiff respondent continued the business under the trading name and style MS4 Diamonds as his sole proprietorship firm the plaintiff responded was to continue using the trademark ampa and all the assets goodwill were transferred to the plaintiff respondent in the suit filed by the plaintiff responded he claimed trademark infringement over the use of his trademark ampa the plaintiff responded claimed that he was entitled to continue using the trademark ampa and all the assets and goodwill were transferred to him and would use the ampa trademark in respect of cycles up to 14 inches in tire radius and the defendant appellate company were to use the ampa trademark in respect of all cycle models of tire radius more than 14 inches The plaintiff respondent claimed that in 2020 he was made aware that the usage of the trademark Ampa and logo by the defendant or appellate company for identical goods and stated that the defendant or appellate company adopted the use of the impugned trademark Ampa and the logo to benefit from the goodwill of the plaintiff respondent He also claimed that the defendant appellate company was fully aware of the prior use of the trademark Ampa by the plaintiff respondent The defendant appellate company filed a written statement stating that the mark Ampa was coined by Hari Dutt Sharma in according to the dissolution deed plaintiff respondent could use the trademark Ampa only in respect of cycle models up to 14 inches in tire radius whereas Hari Dutt Sharma was also the owner of the trademark Ampa and could not use the said mark for manufacturing cycles with the model size up to 14 inches for 3 years after which it was open for the defendant or appellate company to manufacture cycles of all sizes Signatories of the dependent appellate company entered into the assignment deed for assignment of the trademark Ampa to Ajay Kumar Bawa against a consideration of rupees 1 lakh. The submissions made by the defendant appellate company did not find favor with the learned single judge who granted interim injunction in favor of the plaintiff respondent with the following observations findings. It is the admitted case that the partnership firm of the plaintiff respondent and Hari Dutt Sharma was using the trademark Ampa the defendant appellate company claiming that the trademark applications were filed on a proposed to be used basis only due to imprecise instructions of the erstwhile consultant appears to be an afterthought no clarity has been provided as to who was using the trademark Ampa from the date on which the assignment deed came into effect to the date of incorporation of the defendant appellate company Post the said interim injunction the defendant appellant company filed an intra court appeal in this court where application was filed by the defendant appellant company seeking direction to place on record new facts and documents to show actual uses of the trademark ampa based on the evidence and arguments made in front of the court in respect of this appeal the court decided that the documents filed by the defendant appellant company evidences that the defendant appellant company started using the trademark ampa in 2018 and established that the defendant appellant company has substantial sales customers base and goodwill in respect of the said trademark In light of this the appeal was allowed and the impugned order dated 17th March 2021 was set aside copyright The High Court of Bombay accepts acknowledgement of the defendant. The High Court of Bombay court noted that the acknowledgement of Sri Mahavir Jain Industries defendant in the proprietary rights of Hindustan Unilever Limited plaintiff in their distinctive original and artistic work 
The plaintiff is the owner of the cosmetic brand LA18 Face, which is engaged in the production of nail polishes and other beauty products. The plaintiff had contended that the defendants had tried to create a deceptively similar packaging in terms of style, color, and shape of nail polish bottles and other products. The plaintiff filed a suit of infringement and passing off for their trademarks and copyright. The defendant confirmed to the court that it had not filed any trademark or copyright application, neither do they have any trademark or copyright registration, and further shall not make any application seeking registration of the artwork with the Registrar of Trademarks or the Registrar of Copyrights. The court, after considering the acceptance by the defendant of the contentions, did not press for remaining reliefs in costs and damages. Trivandrum District Court orders Facebook India to remove videos of Sri Ravi Shankar. A copyright infringement suit was filed by M. S. Sweety Priyanka Vempati Ravi Shankar, plaintiff, wife of late Sri Vempati Ravi Shankar, in the District Court of Trivandrum Court against Facebook India defendant. The case was filed due to the posting of Sri Ravi Shankar's sound recordings on Facebook.com without authorization. Sri Vempati Ravi Shankar was a Kalaratna awardee in Kuchipudi, maestro artist who represented India in various international dance festivals. The plaintiff had the exclusive authority to communicate his sound recordings to the public. In this matter, the plaintiff urged relief based on moral rights of Sri Ravi Shankar. The court, after looking into the applicability of the prevalent laws, identified a prima facie case of copyright infringement. A temporary injunction was granted and the defendant was asked to remove the infringing content from the social media platform. Geographical Indications Application filed by Goa State Council for GI Tag for three mango varieties. General Intellectual Property Division in Delhi High Court Post the Tribunal's Reforms, Rationalization and Conditions of Service Ordinance 2021, the various boards, appellate tribunals, which existed under the statutes related to trademarks, patents, copyrights, geographical indications, customs, planned variety protections were abolished and the power to deal with all the pending matters before the said boards, tribunals, have been vested with the High Courts. In order to have a streamlined and a comprehensive review of the manner in which a large quantum of intellectual property rights cases ought to be dealt with as per the order dated 7th July 2021. The Honorable Chief Justice of the High Court of Delhi Court constituted a committee which directed creation of Intellectual Property Division IPD, in the court to deal with all matters related to intellectual property rights. This step was taken to avoid multiplicity of the proceedings and to avoid any possibility of conflicting decisions with respect to matters relating to the same trademarks, patents, design, etc. Key Highlights of the Order the court will frame comprehensive rules for the IPD which shall govern the procedures. A specific committee has already been constituted for framing the Delhi High Court patent rules, which shall govern the procedures for adjudication of patent disputes before court. The IPD created in the court shall be governed by the Intellectual Property Division, Delhi High Court rules. In addition to Delhi High Court, original side, rules 2018, the provisions of the Code of Civil Procedures, 1908. The nomenclature of the cases to be filed in the IPD and the court fee payable shall be as per the office order dated 7th July 2021 issued by the High Court of Delhi. Any appeal under Section 5C of the Cinematograph Act 1952 until the framing of the rules in this regard shall be registered as Regular First Appeal or RFA. Cases under the other statutes such as the Customs Act 1962, the Airports Authority of India Act 1994 and the National Highways Land and Traffic Act 2002 shall be registered as writ petitions civil and shall be listed before the single judge or a division bench as per the amendments pursuant to the ordinance. Extension of TRIPS transition period for LDCs until 1st July 2034. The World Trade Organization WTO has agreed to extend the deadline of the transition period of the Agreement on Trade-Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights TRIPS agreement for the next 13 years, that is, till 1st July 2034. In respect to the least developed countries LDCs, the WTO originally set the transition period up to 1st July 2021. It is also significant to note that earlier in 2005 and in the 2013, the WTO had extended the transition period. 
The TRIPS agreement allows members to provide extensive protection of the intellectual property. The transition period given under Article 66.1 of the TRIPS agreement is a period during which the LDCs do not have to provide the intellectual property rights protection according to the minimum requirements of the TRIPS agreement. Under the agreed decisions of WTO members, it would not require the LDCs to apply for any other provisions except for Articles 3, 4 and 5 of the TRIPS agreement. The extension of the transition period has benefited the LDCs to overcome the financial and technological challenges. Amazon launches IP Accelerated Program in India Amazon.com Incorporated, the American multinational e-commerce company, has launched its Intellectual Property Accelerator IP Accelerator program in India. With over 8.5 lakh sellers registered in India, their goal is to provide services from intellectual property, IP expert, law firms for brand protection. The sellers include various medium and small-sized enterprises who can simply engage with IP law firms for securing their trademarks and protection against infringement on Amazon.in and other websites all over the globe. The IP Accelerator program is set to benefit lakhs of sellers and will have a huge impact on brand protection of medium and small-sized enterprises, especially on the brands that have recently started their business. Majority of these brand owners have had problems while going through the complex procedure of IP registration. The program will help them navigate through the process with the help of trusted law firms that are professionals in matters of trademark and other IP registration applications. The IP Accelerator program can be readily accessed by sellers in Amazon.in, Service Provider Network SPN, and no additional cost will be incurred for the firm listing on SPN. The sellers will have the option to engage with firms of their choice independently as per the mutually decided terms of agreement. The IP Accelerator firm was first launched in the US in 2019 and then expanded to Europe, Japan, Canada, Mexico, and now India has become a part of the same. Currently, six Indian IP law firms have signed up as service providers to become part of the IP Accelerator program. Want to get legal services for yourself? Company360.in provides you with all the necessities required for these procedures for a very reasonable price. If you still have some questions, feel free to put them down in the comments section. Or you can find us at www.company360.in or email us at info at company360.in or you may even call us at 964-334-0938. Thanks everyone for listening. This was Rishav. Until next time.